This is a Hot Pie Media original. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Eric Coram, founder of AIM7. Welcome back to The Blueprint, where we distill cutting-edge science, leadership, and life skills into simple tactics optimized for your busy lifestyle and goals. Today is the first episode in a series of three episodes on how to build lasting habits. Today, I'll break down what a habit is, I'll outline a framework for habit building, and then we'll zoom in on developing goals and understanding your why. These episodes are the result of over 18 months of research and experimentation with habit building, and I'm confident that this is going to help you pursue new and existing goals in 2022. But before we get started, I want you to take two seconds and hit the subscribe button on whichever listening platform you're listening on, as this is one of the best ways that you can help support the podcast. But now on today's discussion. It's now 2022, and a lot of people have made or will be making New Year's resolutions. And according to U.S. News & World Report, by the second week of February, almost 80% of those people will have already given up on their new exercise program, diet, whatever habit they started. But why is this? In this three-part series, I will detail exactly why people fail to follow through on their resolutions, and more importantly, how you can avoid becoming one of those statistics. Failed resolutions start with a poor understanding of what a resolution is. A resolution is a firm decision to do or not to do something. Resolutions aren't wishes. You can't wish to read a book every month or wish to lose weight. You have to resolve to do it. You have to take action and you have to have a foolproof process to get you across the finish line. What you're really trying to do is you're trying to turn conscious behavior into habit. A 2002 daily experience study by habit researcher Wendy Wood and colleagues found that 43% of daily behaviors are performed out of habit. So what is a habit? In a paper by Lally and colleagues published in the European Journal of Social Psychology titled How Habits Are Formed, Modeling Habit Formation in the Real World, there's this wonderful description that I want to read to you. Performing an action for the first time requires planning. Even if plans are formed only moments before the action is performed, and attention, as behaviors are repeated in consistent settings, They then begin to proceed more efficiently with less thought as control of the behavior transfers to cues in the environment that activate an automatic response. It's basically a habit. Essentially, a habit is a behavior pattern that over time requires less conscious thought and effort, and it is assimilated into your daily routine. I'm sure you can think of numerous habits that you have. You wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth. You're not thinking about it, but at some point in time, your parents or caregiver was like, hey, you need to brush your teeth. And you had to consciously remember every night and they would walk you into the bathroom and help you brush your teeth. Well, that eventually becomes something that's an unconscious behavior. If you want to build habits that last, you need to design for them. And this is called behavior design. And this phrase was coined by Dr. B.J. Fogg at Stanford. And it's a new approach for understanding human behavior and how to design for it. And I've been heavily influenced by Dr. Fogg and his book, Tiny Habits. And in the coming episodes, we'll actually, one of the episodes will break down the Fogg behavior model. But I've also been really influenced by the work of Matt Wallert, who joined me on episode number 53. And he has an excellent book called Start at the End. And recently I had Laura Nordgren from Kellogg School join us who wrote the book, The Human Element. And that was episode 81. And he talked about fuel and friction. And I think that's an excellent episode to listen to as you try to think about how there's different fuels that promote a habit or friction that can prevent a habit. These are great listens. I highly recommend that you listen to them if you want to take a little bit deeper dive into behavior design. But right now, I'm going to outline a four-step process we'll be discussing over the next several episodes. And to me, this is why people fail at creating a new habit. They don't have a clearly defined process. And as a side note, this process serves as our behavior design model for my company, AIM7. So here it is in very simple terms. Goals, values, actions, celebration, or acknowledgement. A goal 
values, actions, celebration, acknowledgements. So let's start with a goal. People don't create New Year's resolutions unless there's something they want to change or something they want to accomplish. And you need to get crystal clear on what your goal is and why you want to achieve it. People generally don't just want to lose 10 pounds. They want to lose 10 pounds because their clothes don't fit or they don't have as much energy as they used to or their blood sugar is creeping up and they're at risk for type 2 diabetes. So here's an exercise you can do. It's called the five whys. If you ask yourself why five times, you will usually get to the reason behind the goal. So let's take weight loss. Okay, somebody says, I want to lose 10 pounds. Well, why do you want to lose 10 pounds? I feel sluggish, and if I lose weight, I think I'll have more energy. Okay, well, why is energy important? Well, I feel like I'm tired when I get home from work and I don't have energy. Okay, well, why do you want energy when you get home? Well, I want to be the best for my kids. Well, why do you want to be the best for your kids? And if you keep going down this path, you see you'll get to something that's very, very meaningful. And you need to get really clear on the why behind your goal. And it could be several. And you should write those down and keep them somewhere where you can see them and update them. And it will also be something that you want to remember when you don't feel like taking action to do the thing that you need to do to accomplish your goal. So your why has got to be really, really deep. Okay, it's got to be the cement or the platform upon which your goal is established. Let's talk about goals themselves. Imagine you're planning a road trip to, let's say, Denver, Colorado. Would it be wise to just jump in the car and start driving north? Let's say I'm in Texas and hoping you get there. Well, of course not. First, you would want to determine the route you need to take and how long the drive is. Then you decide if you want to rough it. And drive it all at once or take some time and maybe have a few stops along the way. The same principles apply to creating a goal. You need a clear roadmap to your destination and predetermined landmarks to know that you are on the right track. And an effective and proven strategy for creating that roadmap of goals is called a SMART framework. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-Based. Smart goals remove the ambiguity of poorly framed goals and mitigate the risk that you will overshoot what's really possible. So let's start with specific. When creating a goal, you need to be as clear and concise as possible with what you want to achieve. So for example, don't say I just want to lose weight in 2022. Rather, set a goal to lose 10 pounds. The narrower the goal the easier it will be to create an action plan to achieve that goal. Measurable. Don't just hope for change. You need to measure change. And the only way you can determine if you're making progress towards your goal is to track metrics that demonstrate progress. So if you want to have more energy, you may want to track the number of hours you're sleeping on your smartwatch. Achievable. It's critical to create reasonable goals that you can accomplish in a realistic time frame. There's nothing less motivating than feeling like you're a million miles away from your destination. You're kind of on that ever-going hamster wheel, right? If your goal is to read more, then maybe reading five pages per day is an ideal place to start. It's always better to start small rather than big with new goals because once you accomplish the small goal, you can always increase the scale of the goal. We'll talk about this later. The goal is in the process of creating a habit is to get across the action line every day. And there's a a great example we'll discuss later from Dr. Fogg. Relevant. When picking a goal, it's wise to determine if the goal is relevant to you as a person. And we'll kind of talk about this a little bit later, but you need to ask yourself if this goal aligns with your values. If the answer is anything but a very strong yes, your chances of success are minimal. So, For instance, for me, because I value my health, I exercise 30 minutes to 60 minutes a day. It aligns with my value of health. And so it's easier for me to do that thing. And the last part is time-based. Setting an end date adds finality to the goal. Creating a short to moderate term goal applies a bit of positive pressure to the situation and it helps rein in your focus. Also. Once you knock out the first goal, you have the momentum and confidence to take on another one. So for instance, 
Maybe you're going to take a new leadership course and you're going to accomplish it in 90 days. I think this is really, really important and something people often don't do is they just like, I don't want to lose 10 pounds. Well, maybe it's one pound per week over 10 weeks and then you have a a date marked on your calendar and that's when it's going to get accomplished. It applies positive pressure. The SMART framework is a useful tool for creating accomplishable goals. And once you've nailed this, drawing and following the roadmap is really a piece of cake. And we're going to talk about that later. After you've clearly defined your goals, then you must reverse engineer the process to accomplish the goal. Simply stated, you must understand the behaviors that will allow you to achieve your goal. In addition, you need a process for scaling your actions when motivation wanes. So Dr. Fogg talks about motivation as this, he calls it the motivation monkey. And you never want to rely on motivation to accomplish your goal. Motivational speakers, that's like a quick jolt of caffeine, but it will fail you. So when your motivation wanes, you need to scale back your action. When you have tons of motivation, You can do significantly more work to accomplish your goal, and we'll talk about that later. Next, you need to understand what you value, and we'll talk about this in a later episode, but without understanding what you value, the wheels will fall off when emotion enters the equation. The moment your motivation plummets and you don't feel like taking action, you're more likely to quit. And the last part of this model is celebration or slash acknowledgement. When you take action, you need to acknowledge what you've done in a positive way. And in some cases, you need to celebrate it. And for some people, this is a little bit awkward and something that's going to take some training, but we'll talk about that more in the third episode and the neuroscience behind this and how it can help keep you from quitting, especially if the goal is very intense or it could be painful or the duration to accomplish it is very long. So Once again, the framework is goals, values, actions, celebration. You need to use the SMART framework for creating your goals and then use the five whys to figure out why you really want to chase after this goal. If this episode was helpful, please share it with someone you know that's in the process of pursuing a new goal or maybe a New Year's resolution, as I am positive this will help them on their journey. And if you've been listening to this podcast and you enjoy it, please do us a favor and leave a comment on the Apple Podcast platform, as my goal is to reach 150 comments by February 1st. The reason this is important is because Apple promotes podcasts with a greater number of comments and it puts them in those new and noteworthy section. Thanks again, and Happy New Year, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening. You can find more episodes and all of our other Hot Pie Media originals baked fresh daily at our home online at hotpiemedia.com, the Hot Pie Media YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to podcasts.